Von Kaiser is a step up in difficulty from the rather embarrassing Glass Joe. He is far more aggressive, shaking his head and throwing jabs repeatedly at you. At first glance, the fight seems rather simple, with the game teaching you the dodge and counter punch mechanics. But underneath all that, exists a puzzle. Naturally, people began to wonder exactly how fast each fight in the game could be beaten. Glass Joe was a no-brainer with the world record time of 42 seconds from day one. But things were different with the German steel machine. It is here where I can introduce to you where the best players in the world would investigate the subtleties of guard manipulation and RNG in their quest for the Von Kaiser world record. As with many of the earliest world records, our journey begins here on an old website called Red Tom's Punch-Out. Created by Tom Roth, also known as Red Tom, this website was a hub for Mike Tyson's Punch-Out fanatics in the early 2000s. It contains details on how the password system works, various game genie codes, and even a quiz that is deceptively difficult. More importantly, it housed some of the earliest speed strategies for each fight. Some downloadable video files for the old NES emulator, Nesticle, which I'm unfortunately unable to replay, and a table of world records. There were four tidbits of Von Kaiser info that went into building the first ever strategy. Firstly, you could only get your first star as early as the eighth punch of the fight. And secondly, when Kaiser is stunned, a star punch will cause an instant knockdown. Both of these facts combined together to create phase one. An initial punch is landed, then a dodge and five counter punches, followed by two more face jabs to get the first star. Mac dodges a second jab, stuns, and star punches for the knockdown. The third bit of information was that any time a boxer got up on a one count, a landed star punch would immediately knock them down. As long as Mac was at full health, Kaiser would get up here on a one count. Phase 2 was then focused on getting a star and landing the star punch as soon as possible. This was done by buffering a face punch, then dodging an uppercut and landing an unstunned star punch. The final bit of info was that as long as Mac is still at full health, Von Kaiser will get up for the second time with a very small amount of HP. With Kaiser's health so low, there was no real need for a star punch to end the fight. Phase 3 became land a buffered face punch, then dodge Kaiser's uppercut and counter punch to win. The fight you just watched was a recreation of one of the earliest world records for Von Kaiser. The final time of 38.97 was achieved sometime prior to April of 2002 by two players, Brysolf and Eric Feliciano. This might have been the beginning, but there had been substantial planning that went into this fight. Some of you might have noticed that the first punch in Phase 2 gave us a star, but the exact same punch to begin Phase 3 did not. Were these random events? Was it somehow related to the guaranteed star we got at the end of Phase 1? To answer these questions, we need to talk about a thing I call the punch counter. In order to keep track of when you are owed a star, the game has a special counter that counts how many punches you have landed. I mentioned before that you cannot get a star earlier than the 8th punch on Von Kaiser. Naturally, this means that the punch counter begins at the value of 8. As each punch is landed, the punch counter decreases down to the value of 1. Now the game knows that the next punch can give us a guaranteed star. And lo and behold, we get the star on the 8th punch. When we do get the star, the punch counter doesn't reset to 8, but to 2. As we finish off the phase, we land one more punch which decreases the punch counter again to 1, and the star punch to knock Kaiser down. The punch counter can't go lower than 1, so it stays put. With the punch counter at 1, our buffered face punch will always give us a star here, then dodging Kaiser's uppercut and landing the star punch for the second knockdown. This time, however, the punch counter does not increment down to 1. This is because, for some reason, on punches that knock down the opponent, the punch counter does not increment, and so the first punch in Phase 3 would never give us a random star. Sometime following this, the world record quickly dropped to 37.25 and was held by several people. Unfortunately, there is no surviving footage or explanation that pinpoints the exact change in strategy that managed to save over a second and a half. However, it was likely a change invented by someone you've probably never heard of. Miles Hardinson. Miles' inventive new strategy drastically saved time in phase 3 of the fight. 
but in order to see how, we need to go back to the start of phase 2. Instead of using the buffered face punch to get a star, Miles instead taps up as soon as the fight resumes. This puts Von Kaiser's guard in a transition from down to up. He then launched a gut punch which intercepted the first uppercut and got the star. If this was done frame perfectly, you wouldn't even see Kaiser begin to uppercut. A second buffered gut punch was then used to intercept the second uppercut which curiously also gave a star. I'll come back to this in a second. A buffered star punch was then used to end the phase. With an extra star in the bank, a single star punch was then used to knock Kaiser down the final time. So what was up with that extra star? If we take a look at the punch counter from the beginning of phase 2, the first gut punch occurs when the value is 1, so we are guaranteed to get that star. But the second gut punch also got a star. In this case, it wasn't a guaranteed star, it's what we call a random star. To quickly explain random stars, they differ to guaranteed stars because of two key factors. Firstly, the punch counter must not be equal to 1, otherwise the punch would result in a guaranteed star. And secondly, you must be holding at least one star in the bank. If you aren't holding a star, then it is impossible to get a random star, which was why the old phase 3 strategy would never give a random star on the first punch. In the case for Von Kaiser, random stars occur 50% of the time. With Miles' new technique, the time for Kaiser could be lowered a little further, to just under 37 seconds with perfect execution. However, that's not what happened next. In March of 2004, a new strategy was published onto Red Tom's website, and it crushed the sub-37 Kaiser. Accompanied with a new world record time of 36.48, Matt Turk had just entered the punch-out arena. Matt Turk was nothing short of a genius when it came to Mike Tyson's punch-out, and you will become very acquainted with his name in this series. Unfortunately, like many other runners during this period, he had the habit of hardly ever recording his fights. However, he was very open with the strategies he used to achieve his times, and we are beginning with a new Phase 1 for Von Kaiser. So how did Matt Turk improve Phase 1? Well, the opening punch remained the same, but after that, it's all different. Instead of waiting for the jab, Turk buffered four more face punches and then a left gut punch without even waiting. Then he held up to raise Kaiser's guard for a fraction of a second and landed two more gut punches to get the first star. There was a little trick that had to be done with each of the first five face punches. You had to let go of up right after Mac launched the punch. This tricked Von Kaiser into keeping his guard down. Played side by side, we can see how much time gets lost due to the long wait before Kaiser's first jab. With the rest of the fight using Miles' strategy, the 37 second barrier had been demolished and Turk was on top for Von Kaiser. By the end of 2004, the very first tool assisted speedrun for Mike Tyson's punch out was published by Phil and Janisto. And in March of 2005, Matt Turk had reportedly managed to tie the Von Kaiser TAS time of 35.97. Whether or not Turk actually achieved this time is up for debate, as there is no video and there is no detailed description of how he did it. Fast forwarding 5 years to April of 2010, we can finally see the fastest Von Kaiser time with video proof. A YouTube user by the name of Tanru Nomad had maximised the potential of the Kaiser's casualty strategy that was originally developed by Miles and Turk. The difference here was that Nomad had used ducks instead of the left quick dodge. Although slightly more difficult to perform, the duck is usually the fastest way to avoid an opponent's punch. In comparison, the total animation time of the duck is longer than a left quick dodge. However, you actually end up gaining control of Little Mac one frame sooner. Using a duck at the end of phase 1 and another for the final uppercut in phase 3, Nomad was able to save both frames and just barely set a verifiable world record time of 36.25. The Von Kaiser world record was in limbo. The fastest time with proof sat at a 36.25 held by Tanru Nomad and the unofficial world record held by Matt Turk at a 35.97, which also tied the best theoretical time. The TAS strat was unbelievably difficult to pull off. It involved certain tricks and techniques that were years ahead of their time and the precision required also made it extremely tough. There needed to be an easier pathway to the sub-36. 
Remember how I said in my Glastrio world record history video that left gut punches were always faster than right gut punches? Well, here's more to that story. On screen now is the amount of frames each punch lasts, at least for Von Kaiser. There is a consistent pattern here between the two groups. Left gut punches are the quickest, then it's the right gut punch, then the face punch. The dodge and counter punches are the fastest, but as we've seen, it isn't worth the time waiting for Kaiser to jab, so we can rule those ones out. The Kaiser's casualty strategy had 5 face punches and 3 left gut punches, and one of those gut punches also gave a star, so we need to consider that as well. Funnily enough, when it came to getting the star, the slowest punch now turned out to be the fastest. So to build a better phase 1, the number of left gut punches needed to be increased, and the star ought to have been gotten with a face punch. With ideas from Matt Turk, Tanru Nomad, and Tassa Adelica, Kaiser's Casualty Extreme was born. On March 26th of 2014, Sinister One managed to pull off this strategy to near perfection, getting a final time of 36.00. It wasn't a perfectly executed fight, as we can clearly see a frame or two lost on this gut punch in Phase 2. But even with these frames saved, it wasn't going to be enough to crack the sub-36. Kaiser's Casualty Extreme was just not extreme enough. Sinister's 36.00 was the fastest verified time, for a whole 12 days. A new Tasser by the name of McHazard had recently just completely destroyed the game with his new Tass. He took a look at the Kaiser's Casualty Extreme strat and improved it even further. He managed to swap out the two face punches in the middle of phase 1 for two left gut punches, which saved 6 frames. However, it involved a guard manipulation trick that was pretty unknown in the community. The misdirected gutter. By unleashing a gut punch and then pressing up, it's possible to trick the opponent into raising their guard or to keep their guard up as the punch is heading towards their midsection. This sort of trick requires the opponent's guard timer to be in a very specific position, and I must admit, the more I've looked into the specifics, the less about it I understand. 12 days after his 36.00, Sinister One managed to execute McHazard's new strategy, getting a final time of 35.97 tying Matt Turk and becoming the second person to go under 36 seconds on Von Kaiser. Sinister's new fight was also not executed perfectly. McHazard's brilliant new strategy was actually capable of going one time increment lower. If executed without losing any frames, a final time of 35.82 could be achieved. Eventually, in February of 2015, the Von Kaiser time was lowered to a 35.82 by none other than Salad 1. After finally topping Matt Turk and Sinister and having proof of a new untied world record, Salad would still not be satisfied with this time. The strategy he was using was even better than the one used by Sinister, and it was the fastest known strategy for Von Kaiser. McHazard's little improvement to Kaiser's casualty extreme was not all that he found. He had looked at Phil and Janisto's fight very closely and noticed something. The punch that ended up getting the star intercepted a jab from Von Kaiser. This meant you would have to wait the full duration of time for Von Kaiser to do his next jab, which was 12 frames. However, by delaying the previous punch by one frame and making it a face punch, the seventh punch could intercept the jab on the first frame, and then the following punch which would get the star now landed just before Kaiser's next jab. In short, by sacrificing a few frames, he was able to save back more than twice as many. To make matters worse, that punch that needed to be delayed by one frame was also random. It would only land about 3 sixteenths of the time. If you were unlucky, Von Kaiser would either block or duck. This pushed the optimal luck needed from just 1 in 2 up to nearly 1 in 11 and made the execution significantly harder but still within the realm for a human to achieve. A few hours after his 35.82, Zalad1 managed to perform the strategy again, and this time, he executed well enough to secure a time of 35.61 seconds, and becoming the first person to match the theoretical fastest time on Von Kaiser. Since Zalad achieved his 35.61 nearly 8 years ago, the perfect Von Kaiser time has been matched by many other players. With several new Punch-Out speedrunners rising up the ranks, and many seasoned runners yet to net this one under their belt, this list will surely grow in the future. 
Thanks for watching.